वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला माई नेम इज़ आशा कुठारी चौधरी एंड आई एम अ प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंग्लिश एट गुवाहाटी यूनिवर्सिटी द कोर्स वी आर डूइंग इज इंडियन राइटिंग इन इंग्लिश एंड द मॉड्यूल दैट वी आर लुकिंग एट नाउ इज द सिलेक्ट लेटर्स ऑफ जवाहर लाल नेहरू एंड सरोजनी नायडू द फर्स्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिया जवाहर लाल नेहरू वॉज बोर्न इन एटीन एटी नाइन एंड पास वे इन नाइनटीन सिक्सटी फोर वॉज बॉर्न एट अलाहाबाद हिज फादर मोतीलाल नेहरू हेलिंग ओरिजिनली फ्रॉम कश्मीर वॉज अ रिनाउंड लॉयर एंड इनिशली जवाहर लाल नेहरू रिसीव हिज एजुकेशन एट होम बाई प्राइवेट ट्यूटर्स एंड इंग्लिश गवर्नेसेज लेटर ही वेंट टू हैरो टू कैम्ब्रिज एंड लंडन फॉर हिज फर्दर स्टडीज एट द एज ऑफ सिक्सटीन ही स्टडीड लॉ एट ट्रिनिटी कॉलेज एंड इन दर नाइनटीन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेल्व ही रिटर्न टू इंडिया टू जॉइन द बार एट द सेम टाइम गांधी ऑल्सो रिटर्न टू इंडिया एज अ लॉयर आफ्टर फाइटिंग फॉर द राइट्स ऑफ इंडियंस इन साउथ अफ्रीका नेहरू गॉट इन टच विद महात्मा गांधी द एसोसिएशन विच बिकेम अ टर्निंग पॉइंट इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडियाज इंडिपेंडेंस एंड थ्रू आउट हिज लाइफ नेहरू कंसिडर्ड गांधी एज अ काइंड ऑफ अ गुरु एंड स्टार्टड फॉलोइंग हिज वे ऑफ लिविंग अबेंडनिंग द एयर स्टाइल वेस्टर्न स्टाइल दैट ही है being actively associated with india's independence movement for about 35 years nehru was imprisoned numbers of times by india's british rulers moreover there was this dramatic growth in his political career as he was elected the president of the congress five times and held the post of the prime minister till his death in the year 1964 Jawahar Lal Nehru was a voracious reader and yes also a prolific writer. His time spent in prison had been very productive. He made ample use of his inadequate amount of reading material that was supplied to him in the jail and his love of history made him write the histories of the world and as this came out in the form of letters that he wrote on world history to his daughter Indira Gandhi. these numerous letters that he wrote to his daughter indira were collected into the form that we have now uh, as the book glimpses of world history which was published in the year 1934 and is actually a collection of 196 letters among his other better known works uh, are of course the discovery of india and a bunch of old letters as well as his autobiography while describing a ra- landscape in his language he becomes poetic and his personal letters and jail diaries he employs what we sometimes refer to as the conversational tone at the time when nehru was writing letters were a very common mode of correspondence between many of the nationalist leaders Many of these letters are now available in archives that we are able to access. Now the letters of Mahatma Gandhi for example or those written by Sarojini Naidu or those by Bal Gangadhar Tilak are some of the prominent ones that are recently accessible to us. The letters they write actually document not just their thoughts and feelings they are also a record of their political and nationalistic activities. Now do Nehru's letters differ in accordance with the people that he had to correspond with there are always some typical traits that one can notice in them as expressed by lady mountbatten with whom he had a very close association regarding the letters he had written to her she says that quote they are a mixture of a typical jawaharlal letters full of interest and facts and really historic documents some of them have no personal remarks at all others are love letters in a sense the letters of nehru especially those that he wrote to his daughter indira demonstrate nehru's love for nature for people for history and also show his immense desire to develop the same in his daughter these letters are instrumental in studying and in indira an interest in people and co- and a great deal of concern for them the manner in which nehru addresses his daughter in the letters 
sometimes as my little one or sweetheart or at other instances as Indu or sweetheart Priya, Priya Darshini all of these become a very interesting personal and gripping element that sustains the interest of the reader who is really a child. The addressee Indira is a child. The letters of Jawaharlal Nehru, the early civilizations included in letters from a father to his daughter and the birthday letter which appears in his work Glimpses of World History have been selected for study in this module. The first letter was written when Indira Gandhi was about 8 or 9 years old and the second one he wrote to her on her 13th birthday from central jail of Nainital. Through these letters, Jawaharlal Nehru shares his knowledge with his child. Nehru held the view that knowledge can be never sufficient and he always had plenty of room in his mind to acquire more knowledge which he expresses in the piece, The Birthday Letter. In the early civilizations, Nehru provides an uncomplicated sketch of the different aspects of civilization that prevailed in the earlier times, mentioning about the places, the people, the buildings, the architecture, the histories that attach themselves around these things. The letter begins thus, We have said enough about patriarchs and kings for the time being. Let us now go back a little and consider the early civilizations and the kind of people who lived in those days." Unquote. Indicating the fact that the discussion had already been started and is now being carried forward. The expression, we, in the letter, make the tone conversational, making up with the absence, really, of the reader. Talking about civilization, Nehru says that though there is no particular evidence about the place where men first began to live, as stories such as the Atlantic Ocean destroying Indian civilizations are very commonly told. He further mentions that rivers such as the Tigris, the Euphrates, the Nile, the Ganga or the Jamuna play major roles in the establishment of civilizations. The birthday letter was written as a birthday gift to Indira Gandhi. He wrote the letter in lieu of a regular birthday gift as uh, for him a gift should appeal to both the mind and to the spirit, possessing the ability to transcend any barrier such as the prison from which he was writing. Now the letter according to Nehru, though not directly intended to preach to his daughter, there is always a temptation to make her sensitive about some ethical values. He then goes on to tell her about heroic characters and history or virtues that transform them from being ordinary men to being heroes. He refers to Jean the Ark in this context who was idealized by the little Indira. Nehru's sense of nationalism also becomes apparent in the letter when he talks about the necessity to honor the country. This we have to remember is something that is almost a kind of um, uh, watermark of all that he writes. The sense of nationalism seems to permeate uh, practically every a uh, bit of writing that he is doing, especially those that he is uh, writing when he is in jail. At times he notes when the nation is going through a turbulent phase and it becomes difficult to differentiate between the good or the bad, he advises his little daughter to adhere to the principle of truth whenever the mind is in doubt. The letters, though written to his daughter, uh, Nehru seems to reach to a wider readership and because of the kind of uh, subject matters and the range and the scan of appeal that they project. Now, although Jawaharlal Nehru held the view that the letters were an unfortunate mixture of elementary writing for the young and a discussion at times for the ideas of grown-ups, uh, there are numerous repetitions. Indeed, for all the faults that these letters might contain, there is no end. They seem to have their own significance. Jawaharlal Nehru, of course, has never claimed to be a historian. 
it does can be observed that Nehru's letters are quote personal yet objective, simple and yet put forward lofty ideals which are universal and relevant to today. Even though they were meant only really for his daughter, the addressee of these letters. Moving on to the work of Sarojini Naidu, who is a poet, a nationalist and as well as a social reformer, we, if you look at her life, she is born as Sarojini Chattopadhyay uh, in 1879 at Hyderabad to a Bengali Brahmin family. Her father was Aghurnath Chattopadhyay and had a doctorate in, in the sciences from Edinburgh University. And her mother, Varada Sundari, was a Bengali poet. Sarojini was the eldest of eight children of her parents and her poetic career began at a very tender age of 11. Initially, Naidu was uh, educated from home, but then she topped the matriculation examination from Madras at the age of 12 and this made her extremely famous uh, for the entire nation. Sarojini Naidu was always inclined towards writing poetry and her poetic career begins at a very tender age of 11, as we have already mentioned earlier. And in the year 1895, Naidu leaves for England after receiving a scholarship from the Nizam of Hyderabad for her outstanding performance. Sarojini was acclaimed as the national poet of India and she has also been very often referred to as the Nightingale of India by none other than Mahatma Gandhi himself. Sarojini Naidu's association with the great leaders at the time of India's freedom struggle influenced her greatly to participate actively in the movement. Gopal Krishna Gokhale motivated her to use her poetic expertise to invigorate and reinvigorate the spirit of independence among uh, Indians. Gokhale was also instrumental in introducing her into mainstream politics. Now, Naidu has always been this ardent supporter and follower of Mahatma Gandhi. However, it is under her influence that women in India came forward in large numbers into the public sphere and began to participate actively in the freedom struggle. Sarojini advocated women's emancipation and franchise uh, and helped to establish the Women's Indian Association or the WIA in the year 1917. A very prominent woman of a time, Naidu had an international presence as India's unofficial cultural ambassador and spokesperson of the freedom movement. As a woman, she also had to juggle between her private and public lives, endeavoring to balance her role as a wife or a mother, a nationalist leader, a literary person, and a social and political activist. Sarojini also had to wrestle with her physical illnesses for a very long time, but she never gave up working for the cause of her people or her country. And in the year 1925, she becomes the first Indian woman to be the president of Indian National Congress. Sarojini was also the first Indian woman governor of a state in India. During the freedom struggle of India, Sarojini has correspondence with many prominent personalities in this firmament of nationalist struggle. Uh, people like Mahatma Gandhi, Nehru, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Rabindranath Tagore and a number of others, all of who correspond with her. And this constitutes the main body of her prose writings. Her letters are varied in their content and man manner and depending on the person with whom she is carrying out her conversation. There are also the passionate love letters that she wrote to her husband at the age of 16 
before they got married. And these are extremely interesting ones. She is also seen to be in constant touch via letters with her children, uh, Jay Surya, Randhira Padmaja and Leela Mani when she was traveling. The language of her letters is literary as well as poetic at times. The two letters of Sarojini Naidu that have been included in this paper for study or close reading are letter from Sarojini Naidu to Mahatma Gandhi of August 7, 1928 and her letter to her daughter Leela Mani Naidu which she wrote from Europe uh, on 4th March 1921. Both these letters have been written with different views altogether. The letter addressed to Mahatma Gandhi was written from a tuberculosis sanatorium in Chittur district. It opens with a lyrical description of the nature around her, but the tone gradually changes to gloominess. She talks about the Satyagraha movement that Gandhi started in South Africa. The letter also reveals the close relationship that Naidu shared with Mahatma Gandhi and a prospective visit to America uh, is an agenda that is being put forward in terms of the nationalist mission. At around the same time, Naidu is taking care of her ailing daughter Padmaja and is sad to see her daughter suffer, as she mentions in the letter. Sarojini brings up the issue of uh, Hindu-Muslim unity for which she has consistently strived for politically in real terms. The letter concludes with Sarojini's portrayal of herself as a woman who could play different roles at different times as per the demand of the situation, which according to her, every woman is able to do and should do. The letter mirrors the in some sense, uh, the true essence of a woman who had been and always will be an inspiration to uh, the women of India. In a letter to Lilamani, we find manifest the motherly affection and worry for her daughter, which becomes the chief concern of this particular missive. The letter seems to have attempted to advise her daughter who has been going through a crucial period of her life at an age when she is too eager and too exacting and at the same time ignorant really about her own feelings and requirements. The time when the letter was written, uh, Sarojini Naidu was actually on a holiday trip to Europe and she always carried this strong sense of patriotism at the back of her mind, no matter where she was. And uh, so in, in that sense, location from where she is writing does not really matter. She also insists that her daughter must imbibe within her the same sense of responsibility towards the country. She thought that Indian womanhood is actually a different kind of an idea uh, and would project different systems uh, that are not really manifest in uh, other parts of the world, especially not in the West. However, she also believes that it entails a lot more responsibility to be in this space in India and to be uh, an Indian woman carrying the baggage that she carries, both historical and contemporary. She sought to move ahead with the task of liberating the Indian woman. However, we have to understand and make note of the fact that uh, this liberation is to be a different kind of a liberation and is not something that is simply just going to ape Western feminisms. The letters of Jawaharlal Nehru and Sarojini Naidu exhibit some common traits or sensibilities. One obvious thing and firstly, they are both responsible parents who perform their parental duties in the midst of a great nationalist mission that they are both involved in. Secondly, they want to cultivate in their children 
the values and ideas which they obtain from their own experience. So in this module, what we have been looking at are two sets of letters, uh, one by Jawaharlal Nehru and one by Sarojini Naidu, one male, one female, both parents, both nationalist leaders, both struggling for the independence of India at that particular historical moment. So having placed them thus, we begin to understand how uh, specific uh, inputs seem to project themselves in the letters that come out that are addressed sometimes to their children, sometimes to great nationalist leaders. But consistently at the back of both Sarojini Naidu or Jawaharlal Nehru is the concern for the nation. And to a great extent, although at points of times uh, we find that the personal element comes in and is larger than the political uh, or the sense of history in the case of Nehru, for example, becomes his imminent uh, concern. Uh, while you have these tendencies that are different in both of these letter writers, the one common factor is really the historical moment, as I just suggested. Some of the questions that we might need to consider are really, um, in terms of the historical perspectives, are what you or we as students need to do is make us uh, an attempt to comparatively study both these uh, letters that are prescribed for you in this particular course. We also would do well to look at Sarojini Naidu's letters in the light of her dual roles as a mother and a nationalist leader or Nehru's letters uh, that describe world history to, uh, to his child in era. And again, at no point of time is he really just Nehru, um, the father. He's always uh, the nationalist leader. So, Having looked at these letters, uh, it, is, it, it would be a very valuable um, uh, exercise indeed to also make a significant kind of comparative assessment of both these uh, writers. Thank you.